Nice console. What game is it? Well, that's not a game. That's all one. O1 is not playing around with their tablets. They aim to provide benchtop level performance with the added advantages of portability, ease of use and affordability. The TAL 3000 series includes a few models, but we can divide it into three, 70 MHz, 100 MHz and 120 MHz. Those come with two or four channels and each and one of them also have the high 12 or 14 bit resolution versions that ends with A. Why A? I would say A for advanced, but let me know what you think. Actually, hold that thought. On the left, we have the 8-bit model and on the right, the 14-bit one. The 8-bit model can display only 256 discrete voltage levels, while the 14-bit model offers a much finer resolution with 16,384 levels. This allows the 14-bit one to show subtle changes in the signal that would be lost in the 8-bit one. As you can see, as we zoom into the signal, you'll see that the 14-bit model reveals more intricate details in the peaks and valleys compared to the 8-bit one. The standard accessories that you get with those scopes are an aluminium stand that you can adjust its height, a quick user guide, technical specifications, a CD for the software, probes depending on the amount of the channels that you have, BNC to SMA adapter and probe accessories, micro USB to USB A cable, 20 amp adapter, uh, probes for the digital multimeter models, AC to DC adapter and a power cord and the soft carrying bag from O1. The full user manual and other accessories are available on our website, but not only. At tme.eu, you can find hundreds of thousands of products from trusted brands with high stock levels and 96% of the orders are shipped on the same day. So you have two options, order now or after the review. The first question that you might ask since it is a portable oscilloscope is for how long it can last on one charge. Well, we can calculate it. The battery capacity is 8000 mAh and the power consumption is less than 15 watts. We can divide the two, multiply by the voltage which is 7.4 volts and let's assume that the discharge rate is 1C. Run a simple calculation and we get that this is about 4 hours. And as every good student, let's check if our answer is correct. It's amazing! You are 100% wrong! Well, it is not in this manual, it is in the full manual, but the battery will last about 5 hours. And that's exactly why I read those manuals. And you should too. The next big thing about this scope is the display, an 8 inch of multi-touch capacitive screen. With one touch you can move the signal around and by pinching it you can zoom in or out. But if you are not comfortable with those gestures because you are wearing gloves, you have two more options. One option is to touch the display in the middle or in the side to select, move and adjust the scales by pressing the arrows. The second option is to simply use the good old knobs and buttons. Channel selection can be done by pressing channel 1, channel 2 or channel 3 or channel 4 buttons. Signal positioning is done with the top knob and scaling is done with the lower one. For horizontal controls you need to press the HOR button. If you want to quickly restore the positioning of the signal to the center you press the upper knob and if you press the lower knob ha, nothing happens. Not even if you are uh, pressing and holding or you are pressing and pressing and pressing. Nothing. If you know uh, tell us about it, you'll get fame and glory among O1 fans! And there is already one over here, you can hear it. It's right there. But it's probably not as small as the one produced by Sunon, on which you can learn in this video. The world's smallest fan. Overall, it's a very nice touchscreen, it's very intuitive to use and easy to use even if you are wearing gloves. On the back we have a strap with which you can secure the scope in your hand and it is made of aluminium and on the sides you have plastic covers to provide you with extra grip and protection. Notice that it has a very low profile so none of the buttons is pressed even if it's lying upside down and there are no sharp edges. 
probe terminals are located at the top and on the side we have the other ports and those include the probe compensation signal, trigger signal output or pass fail output, micro USB to connect the PC, USB-A port to save the waveforms, Ethernet port for the network and as Clarkson says, POWER! When you want to turn it on you press the big button, it's always the big button. And the sad thing is that this series is not included in the family picture, you cannot find it. Maybe it needs to be updated. Which reminds me, maybe we should go through the main parameters. So although there are a few models, most of the parameters and functions are the same. So the sample rate is maximum at 1 giga samples per second. We have the record length, uh, which is up to 40 mega. Uh, the refresh rate is 45 frames per second, 45,000 frames per second, and the maximum bandwidth is 20 mega. Uh, we have here the interpolations of sine over x and x, uh, various triggers for signal and uh, for logic and for bus, uh, slope, rising, coupling AC and DC as usual. The save, you can uh, easily save your waveforms or record the whole signal to internal or external uh, drives. We have the various uh, measurements that you can do here on the signal. Uh, cursors, auto cursor, voltage time, time and voltage. Uh, mathematical functions. Uh, the usual that you get, uh, subtraction, addition, multiplication, division, and the user-defined one. Uh, by default, uh, you get from TME those uh, decoders for UART, I2C, SPI, and CAN. Uh, Autoscale is also available by pressing this uh, button. The horizontal uh, menu gives you uh, possibility to enter to the magnifier that is available only on the advanced models with different ratios. Fast Fourier transform with peak detect, uh, various windows, and decibels, RMS, radians, and degrees. Uh, XY mode, pass fail, and the digital multimeter if you have the digital multimeter built in the oscilloscope. There are only two major differences between the models and the first one is the rise time which is 5 nanoseconds for the 3070 models, uh, 3.5 nanoseconds for the 3100 models and 2.9 nanoseconds for the 3122 models. Uh, the second difference is that the advanced models have the magnifying glass function. Let me know if you would like to see how to connect them to the PC and check out how the software looks like. And if you are interested in the device, I invite you to go to tme.eu and if not, I'm sure that there are other scopes that will suit your needs. Thank you for watching.